Blessings, brothers and sisters. Um, I hope that we are all getting closer to God and just getting in his presence. I know that this is, I, we've been saying this for weeks now, but everyone's going through stuff. Everyone's going through trials. Um, and it, it's a perfect time to just get close to God, close to him, his presence, to seek his presence. Um, which is the most important thing is to stay rooted in his word, but also seek his presence. So, um, and that's what we're here to do tonight. So if you guys just want to bow your heads and close your eyes and just pray right there where you are right now, um, and we can just get started. Lord, I thank you for this day that you have given us, my God. I ask that you bless each person that is watching and every person that isn't, my God. I ask that you have mercy on us, my God, that you that you just move this night, Lord, however you want to move in each person's lives. Um, and I thank you for this day, Lord, and I just, I want to give you praise and glory and honor in this night. In Jesus' name, amen.
God bless everyone. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing good. I am. I'm doing good. I'm doing all right for the most part. Staying safe. Um, and I hope that most importantly, you guys are trusting in God and just uh, having faith throughout these times. Um, I want to first start off by thanking God for this opportunity uh, to be able to minister to you guys in these circumstances. You know, I, I thank God for the ability to have this uh, way of being able to continue to have the services that we have on Saturday. I know it's nowhere near how it should be, but at least we're getting something and that's because of technology. Um, and I also want to thank um, our pastors for the opportunity of uh, letting me bring a word to you guys. So I want to start off by um, bowing our heads and closing our eyes and starting with a prayer. So, Father God, I thank you for this night. I thank you for the opportunity that you have given us, Lord, to meet here. I thank you because you have been good throughout everything, Lord. I thank you because there is nobody like you, my God. Lord, I put this night in your hands, Lord, and I pray I have the minds and the ears of everyone who is watching me right now, Lord God, and I pray that nothing come out of my mouth that is not from your will, Lord God. I thank you for everything, and in your name I pray, amen. So, tonight we're going to talk about a story that, like, most of you guys already know, and it's a very, it's very, very common, but this, this was actually a word that God gave to me, like, four years ago, um, and when I opened up this uh, preaching on my computer, I looked at the date, and it was, like, 2016, um, and he spoke to me about this when I was going through, like, a really, really rough time, but it was a word that I felt in me to store until the right time. And recently, with everything going on, it was a word that, like, God kept bringing back into my mind. Um, so I honestly had even forgotten that I wrote it. But recently, you know, God was just like, hey, like, remember this? So let's see how it goes. Um, we're going to talk about David and Goliath. Um, and we're just going to head straight to the word. And this is a story that is found in the book of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm not going to read the whole chapter because it's long, but you can read it later on if you'd like. Um, so let's start with verses 4 through 11. And when you have it, you know how we always say when you have it, say amen. When you have it, comment amen. Get it? Yeah, anyways. All right. So it says here, then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to, the, to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet and his bronze coat of mail weighed 125 pounds. 
He also wore bronze leg armor and he carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of the shaft of his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's beam, tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. His armor bearer walked ahead of him carrying a shield. Goliath stood and shouted a, a taunt across to the Israelites. Why are you all coming out to fight? He called. I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servant of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply ch shaken. So I'm going to dissect this a little bit. Um, first, I want you to pay attention to how the Bible describes Goliath as being a champion. I want you to keep that in mind. Then in the next few verses, it talks about how he would go and basically bully these people for 40 days every morning and every night. And he would go and he would tell them like, oh, like, why don't you fight me? He would go and he would tell them like, why haven't you fought me yet? Um, then he's like, oh, like, send somebody to fight me. And if he wins, then we're going to be we're going to be your slaves. But if I win, you guys are going to be my slaves. Um, so obviously, you know, the Israelites got scared when this nine foot tall man would come to them. And his, it's not like he was like, it was not like he was 4'9", he wasn't 4'7", like he was nine feet tall. That's humanly impossible. And he could have probably like stepped on them and they probably would have died. So take a second here and replace Goliath with a situation in your life that just won't seem to end or a struggle that you've been dealing with for a long time and it just won't get better. Um, replace it with a situation that you feel like there is no way out of. A situation where you see no light at the end of the tunnel or a person in your life that has pushed you down or has taken advantage of you no matter what you do now replace goliath with whatever came to mind as i was saying that and keep that in mind how the bible talks about goliath as being a champion so let's keep reading in verses 12 through 15 it says now david was the son of a man named jesse and Ephrathite from bethlehem in the land of judah Jesse was an old man at that time, and he had eight sons. Jesse's three oldest sons, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shimea, had already joined Saul's army to fight the Philistines. David was the youngest son. David's three oldest brothers stayed with Saul's army, but David went back and forth so he could help his father with the sheep in Bethlehem. I love how the Bible mentions David as being the youngest out of all of the sons this is really important in the story because it tells you that god can use anyone he can use you no matter how old you are he can use you no matter what you've done he can use you no matter what you do he can use you no matter how smart you are how good or not good you are at something when god calls you to do something he will give you the authority the power and the ability to fulfill it no matter who gets in the way or who you are it's not about you Remember that it is about God's purpose being fulfilled. He can use you to defeat champions. Then in the story, we see how Jesse tells his son um, to go and take food to his brothers and to the captain where they were at. And um, if you know, his brothers were with Saul and they were fighting against the Philistines. So they were being the men that were being taunted by Goliath. And I believe that in this story, Jesse, like maybe he didn't know that he was doing this, but I feel like God used Jesse to give David, to send David from where he was to where Goliath was. You know, I feel like Jesse was that bridge that connected the purpose of God um, to David because it was because of that, because of Jesse telling him, hey, go take this food to your brothers, was that he was able to find out about who Goliath was and what was going on. So God, you know, makes everything happen for a reason. So early in the morning, David goes to the camp where his brothers are and he finds his brothers. And as he's there, guess who decided to show up? The champion, Goliath. And it says that when they, when the Israelites saw that Goliath was there, they all ran away scared. So let's look at verses 27, 25 through 27. It says, have you seen that giant? The men asked, he comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife, and the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. David asked the soldier standing nearby, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? 
who is this pagan Philistine anyway, that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? And these men gave David the same reply. They said, yes, that is the reward for killing him. So take a pause right there. And are you starting to see that David wasn't there just because of like a coincidence? Like the soldiers are telling him like whoever kills this giant gets money, a wife, and no taxes. David was probably like, for real? Like he was probably like, shoot, I'll do that. Um, but you know when like you're talking about something and you're super excited about something and somebody comes and they just like pop your bubble and they kind of ruin your fun? The same thing happened with David. As he, as he was talking to the other soldiers and the other men about the reward, one of his brothers sees him talking to these men and he gets mad at him. And he's like, what are you even, you're not even supposed to be here. And you're supposed to be home taking care of, taking care of the sheep. And we all have those moments. We all have moments when somebody comes in and rains on your parade. It's like maybe you were looking at a, a brochure of a college that you really wanted to go to. And, or you're thinking about shoes or clothes or a video game or something that it is that you wanted or you want. But while you're thinking about it, a voice inside of you is like, dude, you know, your parents could barely make ends meet as it is. So you really think that you're going to be able to your parents are really going to be able to afford to send you to that college or you're like yo like you literally just maxed out your credit card like two days ago so obviously you can't afford whatever it is that you were thinking about and for example i know i'm not the only one like i'll go to a store sometimes and i'll be walking around looking at something and i see something that i like and then i look at the price tag and I just do like the walk of shame. I just look, put it away and I just walk around and I just turn away. And I don't even, if I'm with somebody, I don't even tell them like how much it was because I'm just like, you know what? Never mind. It was, it wasn't meant to be. But the same thing happens. But the same thing happened to David. You know, he was looking, he was, he was hearing about this reward and he was getting interested in this because he was like, oh, maybe I should, maybe, maybe I should do it. Maybe I can do this. And his brother comes to talk down on him. But he didn't get discouraged and he turned away. Basically, the story literally says that he his brother comes to him to tell him like, oh, what are you even doing here? And he just kind of like brushes him off and he goes to talk to somebody else about the reward. So he wasn't even he wasn't even bothered by what his brother said to him. When you think about whatever it is that you want, like, for example, you really want to go to a school or you really want to get a job or you you um there's something that you really really want and for example like you become a junior in high school and they start sending you all these brochures of these college campuses that are like super super nice and you're like hey maybe I maybe I could go to this school but obviously they're super expensive and you kind of just like brush it off um or you you hear about a new job offering and like you're, you're where you're currently working at like it's like a higher position and you don't even bother to apply because you don't think that you're good enough for it and why is it that like we turn those things down like why is it that we don't take the time to uh look into those things um verse 31 talks about how david uh questions about the reward were reported back to the king and the king sends for him you see, many times we are sitting here thinking about these things that we want, the dreams that we have, and all of a sudden you're overheard and they stop like whoever whoever's near you is like, hey, like, show me what it is that you're talking about. Like your parents, they'll be like, like you'll be looking at something, you'll be talking about something. And they're like, oh, like, what is it? Like, show me. And sometimes like you don't even show them because you know that they're going to say no. But like, what if you did show them and they said yes, like you never know. Or like when it comes to like a job, like maybe your manager's like oh like what are you what you're interested in that position like let me see your resume but you think like no i don't have the qualifications and you don't even bother um when david goes to the king he tells him oh like don't worry like i'll fight him um but saul himself the king was like you can't do that he was like you can't fight him because you're too young but as we know the story like did that stop david like the king himself was doubting david but did it stop him no. So should the circumstances that you're going through now stop you from what doing from doing what God has called you to do? Should your parents like financial status or immigration status, medical status, whatever it may be, stop you from doing what God wants you to do? Should these things stop you from your goals? They shouldn't. Many times we forget 
who the God that we serve truly is. Like many times we forget that he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Many times we forget that the same God who used Moses, to, who, who used the stick and gave it to Moses to part the Red Sea is the same God that we serve today. And we serve a God that, you know, hasn't forgotten about us. And we serve a God that will never forget about us. We serve a God that provides for the animals every day. And we shouldn't limit, our God is has no limit. to. there's no limit to the things that he can do for us. We are children of the most high God. He provides for you every single day. Like if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't even be here, you know? But sometimes as soon as like we have all this faith and then as soon as a crisis hits, you know, as soon as something happens, as soon as we feel like we're way over our heads with something, all of that faith magically disappears from our heads and we start doubting God. And I have I have seen God use people to put bags of food on my doorstep at my house when we didn't know where our next meal was going to come from. And I have seen God provide for me when I had all these crazy bills and I was barely even working and I was be I wasn't able to afford them but somehow God made a way. And I have seen God be there for me when nobody else has been. So why would I start doubting God just because things get hard? Again, if they've already gotten hard and he made a way, why wouldn't he continue to make a way regardless? What happens is that as much as we want to have our eyes like focused on, on the prize, you know, sometimes the devil himself comes in our minds and he starts putting doubts in our heads. You know, Saul was telling David, like, no, you can't do this. But David knew that he could. He knew he had experience with the with with fighting creatures because he was already protecting the sheep back home from like the lions and the bears. In verse 37, it says, the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. When the devil comes to remind you that you can't keep going, when he starts to come and, and put doubts in your head, remind him who the God you serve is. The devil is, is just trying, he's just trying to scare you. He's trying to get in, he's trying to get your eyes off the prize because he knows that if God, if you trust God and if God does what he wants to do in you, and if you let him use you, he's going, the devil's going to be defeated. And what he's going to use you for is going to be so out of this world that he, he's, there's this, he's not going to have any place or any power. So as the story goes on, Saul, like, um, Saul sees that David is not backing down from this fight. He sees that like, you know, he's, he's being persistent about it and he's like, all right, like, that's that's fine and he gives him this armor and david puts it on to like get a feel for it because he never worn stuff like that before and he's like not nah, like i can't use these so he takes them off and he takes five stones in a sling and that's what he goes to fight goliath with um you see like we don't have to go and do all these crazy things sometimes in order to accomplish our goals like you don't need to sell all your stuff in order to afford college or you don't need to um apply to like 20,000 jobs or, or just do all these crazy things to to be able to accomplish what it is that you want remember that like what is for you is gonna happen no matter what no matter who stands in your way no matter what your limitations may be Whatever God has designed for your life is going to happen no matter what. So remember that your, pro your part is to pray, to fast, and to have faith in God. You know, our job is not to figure out how things are going to happen. Our job is not to figure out how we're going to get the money, how we're going to pass the class, how we're going to get the job. Our job is to make sure that our relationship with God is well kept. Our job is to make sure that we are maintaining our faith and our trust in God no matter what is going on around us. He will take care of the rest. Psalms 20 verse 7 says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. So we need to trust in God at all times and we need to keep walking. You know, it's, the Bible talks about how faith without works is dead. We cannot stay stagnant just waiting for an answer. We can't stay waiting for the miracles or for, for whatever it is that you're waiting for to just fall from the sky. Like that's not, that's not going to happen. 
you yes we all we're all waiting on things from god but that doesn't mean that we have to put a pause on our lives and just sit there and wait for it to happen we have to keep going and we we have to keep going and maintain our faith in god and his will will come to pass in our lives in his timing so how big is your faith so put yourself like in david's shoes for a second and like would you have been able to go and and fight this giant with only the five the the five stones and a sling like because honestly i'm like i don't know how he was like i don't know how he had that much faith to be like yes like i'll just go i don't need this armor i don't need i don't need no protection just give me these five little stones and this and this sling and yes i'll i'll go because what happens is like we can have great faith we can have all the faith in the world you can have a mug that says number one faith person or a t-shirt or something but when trouble comes knocking on your door why does the faith go from being so great to being like to to nothing like why does this happen and this happens because we're human this happens because we're flesh the eyes that we have sometimes we focus more on the problem that is in front of us than on god with everything that has happened this year like our faith has been tested greatly I I'm, I refuse to believe that some of y'all like no nah, I still have the same like I'm I'm still good I never had no no breakdowns because t let me tell you it's been hard but we when this all first started like we didn't know what was gonna happen and me personally like I I wasn't scared because of like oh there's this huge virus going on like I was scared for the safety of my family of my friends and uh, with all the riots and the pro and the and the protests and everything i was scared because something like that like has never really happened in this state and it started happening and i was like oh my gosh like i'm scared for the safety of my loved ones um and yeah i lost i didn't lose a little faith but like it wasn't like i was like oh yes like yeah like no it's 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 a human thing but that's why that's because I was looking at it with my physical eyes. I wasn't looking at it with my spiritual eyes and we were, we need to remember to look at things with our spiritual eyes. The see the eyes that see a roof on on your head when your house just burned down. The eyes that see the bank account full when you just paid an overdraft fee. The eyes that see the the tank on your car filled when it's literally on E. Those are the eyes that we need to have at all times because God, we need to remember that who God is and what he has done for us and how he will never stop doing things for in our favor. If you are unable if you're unable to see God's blessing, then maybe you're just looking at life with the wrong eyes. So, let's go back to the story. So, Goliath sees David and he's like, "Oh, like this is the this is the person that you guys sent to fight me, like this this little this little kid like no." And then but David that didn't stop David from continuing to be like i'm gonna fight you um when we have to fight our battles we cannot give up life is hard yes but god never said that it was gonna be easy god never said oh don't worry like you're not gonna go through anything no he literally says you will go through troubles but take heart i have overcome the world that's literally what the Bible says. He, he said it to the disciples. Yes, you're gonna go through trials. You're gonna go through tribulations. You're gonna get stoned. You're gonna get you're gonna get uh, judged for for following me. But don't worry because I have overcome all of that. He is with us at all times. He says that he will never leave us or forsake us. Sometimes we feel like he's not there because he's silent. And that's a huge thing. Sometimes we feel like God isn't doing anything because we feel like we're looking for him and we're not really getting anything back. But a teacher is always quiet during a test. Whenever you're taking a test in school, the teacher doesn't talk unless you have like a question, you know, and sometimes even when you have a question, they're like, no, like, I can't, I can't say anything because I'll give you the answer. It's the same thing. God is, is silent. If God is silent, it's because he's working. And I believe that he's working in each and every one of our lives currently um also remember that it's not your timing it's god's timing and sometimes we want things like super like quick we want like a microwave like if 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 they're taking too long in the drive through lane we start getting annoyed because i'm i'm that type of person it's the same but it's not it's not our timing it's god's timing and his timing is always perfect god has always come through for me when i felt like 
that when I felt like God wasn't going to do anything, that's when he stepped in and did something. And his timing, I've, I've, I, can never, I can never sit here and tell you that has, his timing has never been perfect because his timing has always been perfect. So patience is key. And don't get tired of, of waiting on God. Have faith that he is there at all times. Let's keep reading verses 45 through 47 say, David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of the heaven's armies the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today, the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle and he will give you to us. This is literally my favorite part of the story. Like it's not even my favorite part of the story isn't uh, when they, even he when when he defeats him. My favorite part of the story is literally this right here. This these few verses because he hadn't done anything yet. David had not made a move and he was already talking about how he was going to have the victory. Isn't that so powerful? Like David was using the authority that God has placed that God had placed in him without even making a move. Some of us need to start doing that. When our Goliaths in our lives try to come and defeat us and try to talk down on us and try to bully us, or, or just when things around you seem like they're just impossible, you need to claim the authority of God. You need to remember who you are. You need to remember that you are blessed and highly favored by the King and he has overcome. And through him, we also will overcome. And now let's talk about the part of the story that everybody knows, which is the defeat. In verses 48 through 51 says, As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him, reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone. He hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistines in the forehead. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath David used it to kill him and he cut off his head. So he not only does he defeat him, but he uses his sword to cut off his head. Crazy. Like you see how David used something so small. He literally used the sling and the stone. So what I love about this is that David was able to defeat him. And if David used the authority that God gave him, why do you think that you can't? All throughout the Bible, we see stories of people who put their trust in God and who worshipped him through their struggles. Daniel, when he was in the den of the lions, Job with his sickness and losing his fa everything, Moses in the Red Sea, Paul and Silas in, in jail. I could go on and on with examples, but wouldn't you want to be added to that list? The list of people who didn't give up, the list of people who fulfilled their purpose because they had faith and they trusted in God no matter what happened. All these people have one thing in common, and in the end is that they had the victory. Today, in Christ, we have the victory. We need to look less to our problems and more towards him and just worship him. And we need to stop listening to everything going on around us. So, you know, the, the, media, the, the media is just doing so much to just concern to, to get us worried, to get us scared, to get us, you know, feel this type of way. But we need to stop listening to all of that. Yes, it's good to be informed, but... Sometimes it's just too much and we need to stop and listen to the word and listen to the voice of God and, and what God is trying to tell us. What if you focus so much on your problem that God is just like, all right, like you don't want to get out of the situation then. And he just, he backs off. You don't, you don't want me to do anything. So I was just, you, you're too concerned on your problem right now. You've forgotten about who I am and what I can do. What if God had already decided to bless you, but because you kept doubting him or because you didn't seek him, he just delayed your blessing. As the story continues, we know that David cuts off Goliath's head. And it says that when uh, the other men saw that the champion was dead, they turned around and ran. When that big door opens in your life, all the other little ones start opening as well. When when you get a new job, that's like the big door. And then you start earning more money. And then you start paying off debt. 
and now you have more money to save or you have money to buy that car that you've been needing to get or you needed to get a, a new house and and it comes to everything it's kind of like a chain reaction because of that one door open remember that god always blesses us more than we think that he will we ask god for one thing and he does so much more for us than what we think he's going to to do there are no limits to what he can do and let me close with this uh verses 57 through 58 say as soon as david returned from killing goliath abner brought him to saul with the philistine's head still in his hand tell me about your father young man saul said and david replied his name is jesse and we live in bethlehem this part is so important why is this important because after god gives david the victory and he defeated his giant saul asked him who his father was and david stayed humble he could have said my father why are you worrying about my father right now we need we need to worry about me and how i just defeated this giant and how i just solved so many problems with you guys but he stayed humble and he was like my father oh yeah he lives in bethlehem like his name is jesse he remembered who he what where he came from when god gives us the victory when god blesses us we cannot forget who actually made it possible we cannot forget why it is that we are where we are when you get a new job when you when you get a new ministry when you get a, a new car a, a new house whatever the blessing may be you need to remember who gave it to you and why you have it you need to be thankful to God for giving you that blessing. It is God that, it is because of God that we receive blessings and it is God who fights our battles. Without him, we are, we're nothing. You know, he is greater. God is, is greater than everything that you're going through. He is greater than your fear. He is greater than your doubts. He is greater than your, your circ, the circumstances around you. He is greater than, than the sickness going on. He is greater than all of that. That's our God. And we need to remember that and we need to walk in authority, we need to walk, remembering we can't walk with our head down. This is a time where so many people are looking to us, to the church, to see how we're reacting with everything going on. The last thing that we need, the last thing that they need to see is us walking with our heads down because you know what they're gonna say? They're gonna be like, well, aren't you that one that's always preaching about how good God is and how 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 powerful he is and how much he's done for you guys? Like what what's, what's, up, what's going on now? No, we need to make sure that we are still speaking about God in the same way that we speak about him when he does, when everything is good. Because if not, people aren't, how do you expect people to believe in God if you're preaching to them, but your head is still down? Tonight, with, with everything that's going on, I pray that we don't forget that the same God that has been with us time and time again is still with us right now. If God wasn't with us, we would probably not even be standing. If God wasn't with us, we, he wouldn't have provided for us throughout this pandemic. Like there was so many things that were closed. There were so many people that didn't have jobs. There's still people right now that don't have jobs, but yet you still have food on your table and you still have clothes on your back and a roof over your head. How is that? That's God right there providing for you every single day. If you're watching me speak to you right now, it's because God is with you. That's, that's, it's that simple. Do you, do you see that everything that that's going on? Like every month, something new is happening on top of the whole pandemic. Like literally every month we see on the news, something new has been happening. And it's literally been like this for the whole year, but God is still there in the midst. I don't know about you guys, but throughout this year, I have seen God moving in my life in ways that I had never seen him move before because and and we are still in the home in in chaos like this the world is literally chaos right now and i have seen god be there for me in 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 amazing ways and i praise god for that every single day yes i've gone through my hardships yes i've gone through my time of 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 doubting and yes i've gone through all these things but god has always been there and i've never forgotten that so i just i i'm thankful to god because i know that at the end of the day like i know he's there because you know, my family is still safe. My friends are safe. My family in, in DR is still safe. And he, he has provided for us. And I know that he, he is with me and he is with every one of you guys. You know, he has never failed you and he never he's never going to fail you. If you trust him, if you have faith in him and you maintain a deep relationship with him every single day, he will continue to fight your battles and he will bless you in ways that 
you've never seen before always that's that's always gonna happen but you need to make sure that you're doing your part and you're letting him do his all right so i'm gonna end in prayer so bow your heads close your eyes Thank you, Father God, for this opportunity, Lord. I thank you, and I put each and every one of the people that are under the sound of my voice, I put them in your in your hands, Lord God. I put their lives in your hands, Lord. And I declare, Lord God, that today, Lord God, that you will speak to them, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that their faith increases, Lord God. Lord, I pray for all of those going through some hardships right now, Lord God. I declare, Lord God, that you help them to see you in the midst of their chaos, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you continue to provide for us every single day, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that even though we're not meeting right now, Lord, that we're still seeking you, Lord God, as we should be, Lord God. Lord, I pray that our relationship with you continues to increase every single day, Lord God. And I pray that we continue to maintain a deep relationship with you, Lord Lord, I pray for everything that's going on in the world, Lord. I pray for our church, the people in our church, Lord God. I pray for our pastors, Lord. I pray for the leaders, for everyone, Lord, in this world, Lord God. I just pray for love, Lord God. I pray that this nation, Lord God, will turn back to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I declare that the enemy has absolutely no place over each and every one of our lives, Lord. I cover us with your blood. I cover our families, our friends, our houses, Lord God, our church, Lord God. I cover them with your blood. And I declare that the enemy has absolutely no place in the name of Jesus. I thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord God. And I pray that this word continues to minister us, Lord for the rest of these days, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that soon, Lord, we are able to go back to your house, Lord, like, and, and worship you, Lord God, and thank you, Lord God. And I pray that every day we see a reason to thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for everything that you're doing. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. And Anchor Hope says, amen. God bless you guys. I miss you guys. I don't know about you guys, but I can't wait to see you guys hopefully that happens soon continue to pray continue to stay faithful in him we love you amen god bless you